What's up, everybody? We're back yet again for another drum playthrough review. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and stopping by. It's great to have all of you here. For everyone who's brand new, my name is Nick. I am a multi-instrumentalist and a mixing mastering guy. If you want to call me that, I guess, sure, whatever you want to call me, as long as it's something nice in the comments. And we like to do these videos because it is fun for us to check out other drummers who are better than us. But more importantly, it is good for us to analyze the technique of drummers who are better than us, break it down to a nice, easy-to-digest format, and explain it in a way that'll help all of us as musicians get better and better and better and we got a cool drummer we're checking out again today so i have already reviewed this guy one time before and let me tell you something this dude is an absolute beast of a drummer dull strokes are on point taking over the game right now by the way and he has put out works that have honestly changed how people see deathcore especially modern deathcore he's obviously he, he's inspired a whole bunch of people not only that but I just saw him live for the second time just yesterday at the time of filming this video. So this would be Thursday, the uh, 26th. This dude is on tour with his band, Signs of the Swarm. There's only a couple shows left, so by the time this goes up, the tour will have been over already. Touring with Carnifex, we are going to be checking out Bobby Crow of Signs of the Swarm once again. We already did a review before on him about his uh, other technique that he did with as far as his double strokes, you know, his finger technique and whatnot. But today we're going to be checking out a song. It's a drum playthrough for Cesspool of Ignorance. That's one of the songs that they released on one of their previous albums. And we're just going to be checking out some of the stuff that he's got on this playthrough. Because this is like an official playthrough. The other one that we reviewed was uh, basically just raw audio, not even processed or anything like that, done in his basement. Which is really cool. And it really does show you that the dude can actually play drums like in the songs that he writes. But I wanted to see if we could find something that's a little bit more polished of a, of a playthrough. So that way the mix sounds really good and everything sounds really nice and cool. Because we already know the dude has the capacity to play it you know, that level. We don't need any proving from there. It's already very highly believable that he can play it, you know, the crazy stuff that he makes. Not only that, but I literally watched him live play it last night, and that stuff was, like, on point. Returning to Bobby Crow, we're gonna be checking out the song Cesspool of Ignorance. It's a Signs of the Swarm song. This is a remix from 2021 with this man doing a drum playthrough. So without further ado, ladies and gents, let's get into it. Let's analyze what technique we can from this video, and let's just check out what Bobby Crow has to offer us. All right. Without further ado, ladies and gents, let us get into the review. Look at all the sponsors. That's so cool. Snare weight, Roland, Sherv, Radom. So you can see, too, that they're tracking live drums with that screen in the background. It's live drums, okay? Y'all are paying attention to that, okay? It's live drums. Look at the stick height that he's got on that too. And this is wrist technique that he's using right there. And like you can see with his hand, he's not death gripping the stick. He's keeping it real nice and loose when he's doing it. Right? Very good double strokes. He's using the, uh, the Pearl Demon Drive direct drive pedal. The first one, not the new one that just came out. He's very clean. Not only that, that's the kit that he actually tours with. Because he literally played on that same kit last night. That snare sounds, by the way, excellent. See, now listen to that right there. You listen to that gravity blast. That's what a gravity blast is supposed to sound like. It's not supposed to sound like, you know, like other drum reviews that we've done. It actually sounds like an actual gravity blast. It sounds good, though. It doesn't have to be, you know, like crazy loud. Again, very clean, excellent double strokes. And very groovy as well. Very excellent symbol work. I like how he's coloring this riff too with the toms. It's very excellent. 
So yeah, right here he's using a full leg motion because it's a slower part. Although the bass drums do look like they're triggered out, more than likely. But look at that wrist technique though, that's good and powerful right there. Very excellent. So obviously he's very relaxed. He's playing stuff with very high technicality, still keeping very relaxed with it. That's the goal that you want. And the breakdown. That snare cuts through the mix very well. I like the way it's tuned. Yeah, very excellent job. And notice that they cut off that part right there at the end where he's just kind of noodling around a little bit. That's normal. That's normal with the drum playthroughs. They probably just clipped out all that part right there, did the drum playthrough. And then after that, we're just like, okay, that's good right there. Don't need to add any of the other stuff in, which is fine, which is fine. I mean, most of the time after recording, I'm also doodling as well, just a little bit. Just because it's like, yeah, it's just a little ending thing. It's, it's just normal. It's like a little tick drummers have. But either way, excellent, excellent job. So yeah, man, that was Signs of the Swarm's Bobby Crow once again on the channel. So first of all, let's break that down real quick and as, as best and as efficient of a form as we possibly can. So first and foremost, he's using a lot of wrist technique. You can tell that with his wrist technique, he's not death gripping the stick. He's keeping it very loose and nice and neat. He's not like, you know, totally death gripping the stick. You don't see any tension going on in his form or anything like that. He's keeping very nice and loose. He's keeping very nice and, you know, very good powerful strokes with it. He's not like just, you know, keeping like little strokes like that and then just triggering out his drums. He's actually putting some beef onto it. He's got really good stick heights going on there. That's exactly what you want. And that is something that's pretty unique to the wrist technique style. Very insane amount of power that comes out of the wrist technique style it's very powerful drumming see once you start to switch into the smaller muscle groups you know like your fingers or whatnot or anything like that you are going to lose some of that power but you're basically sacrificing power for speed at the end of the day when you're using you know that particular speed on the drums and you're using wrist it's going to sound absolutely insane and that's exactly what you want something else that can actually be contributed to why his snare drum sounded so powerful with all those hits is how it's tuned tuning your snare drum and actually tightening up the skin on the top of your snare drum tuning your snare drum higher it's going to make all your hits sound a lot more powerful and a lot louder that's because of the vibrations and the frequency that is coming off of the snare drum. The higher up that you tune your snare drum, the higher up of a frequency that it goes on that hertz range. And the thing is with that, that also means that it doesn't take as much to move the skin to cause a good vibration to go and good reverberation to go back and forth between your resonant head and your uh, batter head. So to sometimes tuning your snare drum a little bit higher and having a little bit of a tighter head on the top for your batter side, that's gonna help you to achieve a much louder sound and sound much more powerful without having to put in as much effort per se. Not saying that he wasn't putting in any effort there, he definitely was, but that is just a little bit of a side hack if you'd like to know how some of these drummers are able to achieve these insanely loud sounding blast beats when it doesn't look like they're hitting super hard. It's partially because of how they tune their snare drum, so always keep that in mind. Yeah, but really insanely clean double strokes. You can tell though with his double strokes that he probably has his beat, uh, the beater side of his head probably tuned up a little bit higher. More than likely it's probably fully triggered out. And again nothing wrong with fully triggering out your bass drums or anything like that if you can play it that consistently or anything like that you just want to trigger it out to make the sound level consistent that's perfectly fine but again i've seen this guy play live twice now and he doesn't cheat on his triggers or anything like that the dude man can actually play i didn't unfortunately get to talk to him yesterday i was helping one of the other local bands with setup i was basically being their uh their go-getter and their tech the whole day so i was just running around getting stuff taking stuff off stage putting stuff on stage helping them set up gear like that and i did get to see up in close in person his drum kit and everything like that the symbols that he's using and the pedals and all that he keeps his spring tension on his pedals actually pretty high from what i can see and that really does help with the double strokes he's using that and that 
that's why I knew immediately what pedal he was using. He's using the Demon Drive, the double pedal. And he had his beaters turned away from the felt side, so he's using the stock beaters, but he's using the plastic side of the beaters as well, so that way that helps. It's kind of interesting to see he uses the stock beaters, because most of the time when drummers are playing super fast double strokes or anything like that, they'll switch out to something that's a little bit lighter of a beater. But that's definitely a credit to him, because that means that he's obviously trained with this and that his technique is actually really solid. He doesn't want to change anything about his pedals, because that's how he's learned his technique. Ultimately, that's much more of a credit to him, because it shows that he's very reliant more on his technique than he is his equipment. And usually if you're going to be more reliant on your technique, that means your technique is solid. But yeah, that's just how I knew a couple things about his setup or anything like that. Just because I saw it yesterday, I was able to see it with my own two eyes up close when I was doing the tech work for one of the other bands. So that was cool. And it does help you to kind of understand a little bit more just how certain techniques that he's using works better for him because I'll be honest with you a lot of these drummers nowadays they focus a little bit too much on like yes this is the physical side of things but also things that help you to achieve those physical sides of things in your drumming technique and whatnot is your equipment setup setting up your equipment to be able to allow you to play that you know particular style or whatever technique you're trying to use easier is going to ultimately affect your drumming in a much more positive sense well yes absolutely you should be practicing your technique and whatnot and and keeping all that tight and on point and obviously staying practiced and well practiced at that sometimes the drum setup actually helps you to take it to the next level instead because you want to be able to play at the most efficient level possible so sometimes changing your drum setup to match your play style and changing your drum setup to match the technique you're trying to achieve is actually going to be a lot more beneficial for you in the long run Maybe talk to some drummers out there who do use things like double strokes and, you know, French grip or whatever else they're using to achieve the higher speeds and whatnot. Talk to them about their drum setups. Talk to them about, like, you know, what kind of setups do you use? What kind of tunings do you use on this and this? And, you know, how high is your spring tension on your bass drums and whatnot? Because if ultimately that's kind of the play style that you're looking to shoot for and that's kind of the style that you're looking for, you may want to try and emulate different settings that are going to be a little bit more form-fitted to that particular style and be a little bit more beneficial because ultimately that's what's going to help take your drumming to the next level. But obviously the best thing that you can always do if you ever are around other drummers who are better than you or who are a little bit bigger in the industry, don't be afraid to ask questions. I say this with like a 95% accuracy rating. If you just ask somebody about the technique they're using or just their settings or anything like that, they're going to be more than happy to tell you because I guarantee you a lot of these drummers, they don't want to see you put down or anything like that. They'd like to see you succeed. And especially if it's someone who is bigger and better or anything like that, or he's in a larger band, he's playing more shows, he's He's got more experience in his belt or anything like that. He's going to want to see you do better as well. So guess what? He's going to talk to you about it. He's going to let you know that information. Don't be afraid to ask. It's never wrong to ask a question about the settings, about anything like that as far as technique is concerned. Because a lot of these elder drummers are going to be able to be there for you. Because there were some people that weren't there for them. And they don't want to be those people. That's kind of why my whole channel exists in the first place. I had things that I was looking to ask for, you know, advice and whatnot. And nobody was willing to answer. Or I just couldn't find enough information online. And I didn't want to be one of those people that was like, no, I'm not telling you it's a secret. So that's why I decided to start my channel to help other drummers out there who are maybe, you know, having a little bit of trouble finding some information. So ultimately, that's the takeaway right there. So once again, excellent job, Bobby Crow. It was great seeing you yesterday. You absolutely nailed the set, by the way. Hopefully, we'll be able to see you guys again sometime soon. Please come back to Virginia Beach as soon as you guys can. You guys are awesome inside of the swarm. Absolutely sick. And with all that being said, y'all, that's going to be the end of this video. So here's just a few ways that y'all can support me. So for one, you can like, share, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. You can check out the playlist I have with videos very similar to this. And you can also really... Really? And you can also check out the links I have down below in the description with my band page, my Spotify page, and all that good stuff. And with all that being said, y'all, that's the end of this video. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in and stopping by. It's been a pleasure to have y'all here. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. So cheers. Have a great night.